The most successful people in the entire world all have one thing in common. The most successful people all set specific, measurable, and time-bound goals for themselves in every aspect of their life. And in this video, I'm going to share exactly how you can set smart goals for yourself to reach your full potential, just like the most successful people in the world. So whether you're an athlete, an entrepreneur, business person, whatever it is that you set your mind to, you have the opportunity to reach your full potential. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a big like and subscribe, but let's get right into it. Now the first thing that I noticed when I was researching goal setting and trying to improve upon myself is when I came across the statistic that 83% of the population doesn't set any goals at all. This was mind blowing to myself. And when you dig into the data a little bit more, you learn that only 14% of people actually have a plan in mind to achieve whatever goal it is that they're trying to pursue. And there's only 3% of people who actually write their goals down. It's mind blowing, right? To make things even more interesting, the 14% of the population that actually has a plan to achieve their goal, these people are 10 times more successful than those who don't have any goals. That's an order of magnitude. That's absolutely mind blowing. The 3% who write their goals down are three times more successful than the group that has a plan in mind. In other words, they are over 30 times more successful than the people who have no goals. So you can start to see how the 1% starts to separate themselves from the entire population and a lot of it has to do with goal setting. So here's the importance of goal setting. We all understand that ambitious people need to set these goals for themselves and if you're an ambitious person, this should be music to your ears. This applies in life, it applies in sports, business, politics, social impact, regardless of whatever it is you're trying to achieve, achieve, whether it is you're trying to make money, you're trying to have impact, you're trying to achieve some kind of an athletic performance, you have to set smart goals and you have to write them down. We've even seen this in sports probably the most clearly. A great example is the greatest Olympian of all time, Michael Phelps. He was known to have written down exactly the times that he was hoping to achieve and not only the Olympic Games, but in the World Championships and National Championships, every single year he would sit down with his coach and they'd write down exactly what their goals would be and what it would take to achieve those specific goals. Now let's talk about SMART goals. SMART goals represent an acronym. So SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, Time Bound. And it's really important that whatever your goal is fits into this criteria. Here's an example of a fluffy goal, and we'll talk about how you can make it a smart goal. So whatever it is that you have in mind for your goals, you can adapt them based on this example. A fluffy goal in business would be to increase sales for the year. If you're in athletics and you, let's say you run or you swim, it's be, I wanna run faster, I wanna swim faster. That is a fluffy goal. And let's, let's take a step back and understand the difference between a fluffy goal and a smart goal. So when we're setting a SMART goal, it has to be very specific. So saying that you're gonna increase sales or you're gonna run faster or swim faster is really, really general. It's, it's really hard to control the big picture without taking a step back and picking one of those things that you're gonna improve within the overall. It needs to be measurable. So there has to be a way that you can track progress toward it because what gets measured gets improved. So if you're not actually measuring anything, if you're just trying to grow sales, you know, maybe the, the measurement is total number of sales, but I think you can do a little bit more specific than that. I want to swim faster. So is it, you know, how many meters per second are you going to swim? Or is it a specific event, a specific time that you'd like to achieve? It needs to be achievable. So I mentioned achieve many, many times. You know, a goal that is out of your control could be something like, I'm going to make $10 million and maybe you only made $100,000. So it's not really plausible to increase by 100 times in a short period of time. So it needs to be achievable and it needs to be relevant for you. It needs to be impactful to whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Setting goals and taking other people's goals and using them as your own won't work. You have to find your why and it has to be relevant to whatever you're trying to achieve. It has to be time bound. There has to be a deadline. When there's a deadline, you work much faster towards improving upon the goal that you set for yourself. So even this goal, although it's fluffy to increase sales this year, at least there's this year. So it's not entirely fluffy. This goal could be even more fluffy, like a, like a pillow, if it just said increase sales. It just said swim faster. By putting a time horizon on it, it makes you much more accountable and likely to succeed. Now here's the smart goal version of this sales number. So 
in the beginning we talked about a fluffy goal, which was to increase sales for the year. Here's how you can turn that into a smart goal. And, I, and we'll talk about why it's a smart goal. So we are going to increase my division sales this quarter by 20% by focusing on increasing the number of outbound prospect calls by 10% and improving conversion rate by 5%. Now on the surface, it may sound really in the weeds and really, really uh, nitty gritty, but that's actually what you want. When you're setting a SMART goal, it needs to be simple but focused. And I underlined in red why this is a SMART goal and what elements it applies to compared to the fluffy goal. And this can apply for any type of business, any t not this specific example, but any type of challenge and goal that you're trying to achieve, whether it's in athletics, in life, it can all fit here. So in this one, increase my division sales. So let's say this, this individual is working at a bigger company and they run a specific sales department or they're a sales manager in their own division. So they're trying to focus on what they can control. You have to focus on something that is in your own scope of control. Because if you focus on something that you have no control over, for example, my goal is to win uh, the gold medal at the Olympics, you actually don't determine how fast the other swimmers or runners or athletes perform. You can only control what you can control. So it's super important that you focus on my division, something that you can focus on. The time bound element here is this quarter. So we're focusing on the next coming quarter. We're not focusing on a year. That's a little bit too long of a horizon. It can work, but you want to break it down a little bit more by 20%. So we know exactly it's measurable how much we're going to improve by. And we're going to do that by increasing the number of outbound prospect calls by 10%. So you might think, how are you gonna grow these sales by 20%? You have to have a methodology, you have to ask why and how. How are you gonna actually do that? We're gonna do that in two ways in this example. We're gonna increase prospect calls by 10%, and we're gonna improve our conversion rate by 5%. Notice the numbers here can be whatever it is that makes sense. But here, you know, if we wanna increase by 20%, and we're only changing one thing by 10%, it's unlikely, now depending on the mechanics, that you're gonna improve by 20% in all dimensions. So normally there's a, a few different levers at play and they all come together to improve that one thing that you're trying to improve. Now this is a little bit more complicated because there's two levers, so by increasing the number of outbound sales calls and improving your conversion rate by some amount, the, again, the, the amount can change, that's how we're gonna hit our specific sales goal. Now let's see how we can apply this to our company at MySwimPro. So here's a fluffy goal if you're not familiar, MySwimPro is the number one training app for swimmers in the world for swim workouts, dry land workouts. Uh, we have a massive community. And so you might think as a mobile application, oh, well, it's a good goal for MySwimPro. We wanna get more downloads. We want more people to swim. We want more people to download the application. And that's 100% true. We do want more people to download the application. Check it out linked in the description. But that's not really a specific goal that relates back to the business or what we're trying to achieve. At my swim pro, we set our big, hairy, audacious goal, BHAG. I have a video about how you set BHAGs linked in the description. But our BHAG is to empower humanity to log over 1 billion workouts in the my swim pro app by 2030. So our, our, our mission and our vision is really, really big. But even this is not a smart goal. This is our big, hairy, audacious goal. And we've got to break that down. This is the you know, 10 year plus horizon. So how do we take something like that and really focus it in the short term and set a smart goal around it? So for us, instead of more downloads, because certainly more downloads could relate to this, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't fit the smart model. So for us, the smart goal in this example, by the end of 2020, so it's now 2020, for this year, it's to increase the rate of growth of new workouts logged per week. So it's not even just we want more workouts logged per week. We already know that's gonna happen. There's a specific growth rate around that already. And we wanna improve that by 20%, the rate of growth by 20%. So to break that down further, because even that is kind of fluffy in itself, like how are you actually gonna do that? So you have to understand the why and how. So our current growth rate, for example, is 5% per week. So by increasing it by 20%, we are looking to grow by 6% per week. And that will ultimately lead us back to empowering more people to log more workouts. But how are we actually gonna do that? That's not really a good goal because we don't know how we're gonna do that. It's not gonna work by snapping your fingers. So the first way is by increasing the subscriber retention by 10%. So if we improve the retention, we get people to download the app, but also keep using it then we're gonna be able to improve the number of workouts, the rate of the number of workouts logged per week. 
But even that is still fluffy in itself, so we can go another layer. So how are we going to increase the subscriber retention by 10%? Well, we're gonna build an additional training plan, so that way we improve retention. So once Swimmer logs into the application, they start their first training program. By building another training program that follows up, they're more likely to retain and stay using the application. And that's how we're gonna increase the subscriber retention by 10%. And by doing that, we're gonna increase the growth rate of the number of workouts logged per week by ideally up to 20%. And translating all of this will lead back into our big, hairy, audacious goal of 1 billion workouts by 2030. So as you can see, you need to keep asking why and how and diving deeper and deeper to make the goal really tangible. And if you can't do that, and you can't do it really specifically, measurable, time-bound, then it's not a smart goal. Right? There's another element to the SMART goal that takes this another step further, which I think is super important for an entrepreneur, founder, someone with a growth mindset. And that is to add the two letters to the acronym E and R. So we're going to go from SMART goal to SMARTER goals. Yes, turn on the light bulb in the head. So the SMARTER goal, the E and the R, represents evaluate and redo. So we're going to continuously evaluate how we're doing, and we're gonna redo this process. So we've set the, the, we've gone from the fluffy goal to the specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound goal. And then after we've set that and we have a little bit of progress and we have some traction, we have some learnings from it, we're actually going to evaluate and we're gonna redo it. We're gonna think about it. So that's why it's important not to focus on a yearly basis or a 10-year basis. It's way too much time. Do you know how much goes on in 10 years? Absolutely a lot. So it's really important that you set a smaller time horizon, evaluate as you go through it. And I really do hope you guys have the opportunity to write down your SMART goals because I want all of you to be in the 3% that are three times more successful than the people who just have a plan in mind. Because remember, even if you just have a plan in your mind, you're already going to be 10 times more successful. Take it to that next level. If you have no goals, set some goals. If you already have goals, write them down, it's super important. Let me know in the comments what your SMART goals are, whether it's in business, athletics, or in life. I would love to connect with you guys. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and take care. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.